So Jim Pat on one of my prior YouTube clips asked, can you please do a video on myasthenia gravis versus Lambert-Eaton syndrome? Sure. Why don't we do that? Okay. So I just wrote this question here. Very beautiful question. All right. Very bread and butter, very clean, very direct, very concise with regard to high yield factoids. Okay. So before we get into the question, allow me to be an asshole like I normally am and tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Please share it with one of your friends who's prepping for USMLE. Bring awareness to this channel. Really appreciate it. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. And the link is down below. Now, let's start the fucking question. 58-year-old woman, three-month history, difficulty swallowing, changes in her vision. 10-pound weight loss over this time. 80-pack year history of smoking. CT of the chest shows us her pathology, and it's outlined in red. I jacked this image off of Wikipedia. Okay, this is showing us thymoma. So I googled thymoma CT. This image was on Wikipedia, and then I literally just jacked it and inserted it into my question here. Okay, so we also have a laboratory screening showing us anti-muscle specific kinase antibodies, anti-musk antibodies. And our answers are with regard to the effect of edrophonium and what's the mechanism in terms of additional antibodies. Now, this is myasthenia gravis, okay? Myasthenia gravis can sometimes be a perineoplastic syndrome of thymoma, okay? Not every patient who has MG has thymoma. But if a patient does have thymoma, 2CK wants you to know that if you diagnose myasthenia gravis, then you're going to do a CT of the chest to look for thymoma, because if you remove the thymoma, you can actually cure the myasthenia gravis in the process, okay? I threw in the 80-pack year history of smoking to be an asshole because, of course, this could cause lung cancer, and you might be like, ooh, wow, is this, uh, could this be Lambert-Eaton syndrome with lung cancer? I don't know what I'm looking at here, okay? You don't have to be a radiology expert. You can kind of gauge by the vignette. You could say difficulty swallowing, dysphagia, and diplopia. Those are, those are two common findings in myasthenia gravis. You have somebody who loves diplopia. They love dysphagia. They love ptosis, okay? That gets worse throughout the day. Anti-musk antibodies are a minor antibody seen in a minority of patients with myasthenia gravis, okay? It's lower yield, but I gave you the thymoma here, okay? So the diagnosis is ascertainable. So we're just going to go through the answer choices here. Response to edrophonium will be, which is a cholinesterase inhibitor. Okay, the effects last about 10 minutes. Response to edrophonium is significant in the setting of myasthenia gravis. So we're only going to be looking at our bottom answers here. It will be minimal in Lambert-Eaton syndrome. Okay, Lambert-Eaton syndrome, we are going to have uh, antibodies against presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels and minimal response to edrophonium. In this case, it's the wrong fucking answer because as I just said, we have myasthenia gravis, not Lambert-Eaton syndrome, but we should just have you know, at least as a preliminary point, that if this were Lambert-Eaton syndrome, minimal response to edrophonium, and we have antibodies against presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels. So because that prevents the release of acetylcholine into the, or into the synaptic cleft, if we give a cholinesterase inhibitor such as edrophonium, it's not going to further facilitate acetylcholine binding to postsynaptic receptors because it's the acetylcholine is merely not there to begin with. That's why we have minimal, minimal response to edrophonium and lambert syndrome. Now, if I focus on our actual fucking question, which is MG, we will have significant response to edrophonium, okay? This is called tensilin test. If you give edrophonium and the diagnosis is MG, we should see a significant response, okay? In lambert -Eaton, as I just mentioned, we won't, see, we won't see a significant response. And then we merely have antibodies against postsynaptic acetylcholine receptors in myasthenia gravis. So our answer is going to be here, significant response to edrophonium and anti-postsynaptic acetylcholine receptor antibodies. Okay, so this question is not dramatic or overly difficult. It just is high yield, that's the point, and we incorporate some uh, some various factoids as far as MG can be a perineoplastic of thymoma, do a CT scan to 
visualize a potential thymoma. Removing the thymoma can cure the MG. You should know that anti-musk, anti-muscle specific kinase antibodies are seen in a minority of patients with MG, okay? And then just knowing the difference between lambert-eaton being antibodies against presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels, minimal response to edrophonium versus myosinia gravis, antibodies against postsynaptic acetylcholine receptor antibodies with significant response to edrophonium, okay? And edrophonium is merely a cholinesterase inhibitor, and it's also known as tensilin, okay? Some of you want a very long clip, more discussion. Some of you think I've been superfluous already, so we strike a balance, right? I'm going to make more content. You know the deal. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.